This is Keith of Keith RN, and I'm excited to share in this video an actual demonstration of a Keith RN unfolding skinny reasoning case study on pneumonia of about 20 questions. We're then going to show the students work, and then we're going to show you how you can use the new Keith RN clinical judgment rubric that aligns with the essence of Tanner's clinical judgment model and an adaptation of Lassiter's clinical judgment rubric to assess low fidelity simulation or an unfolding case study to quantitatively measure and assess clinical judgment with a quantitative score. So let's get started and let's look at, a stu at the actual case study that has the data and then we're going to compare it to a first year med surg student in an ADN program to get a sense of their thoroughness of the work using the rubric and then how the faculty scored it. So let's put this all together for you. So here is the pneumonia case study of skinny reasoning. It's about 20 questions. It begins with the home medications, medical history, and again identifying farm class outcome and side effects of medications. Now we have the actual case study, and it's all open-ended responses, and that's what makes it possible to evaluate the thinking of clinical judgment and the assessment of the thoroughness of their thinking because it's open-ended, not multiple choice. If you use multiple choice questions, the rubric is unable to successfully identify patterns or weaknesses of thinking. So we begin with the present problem, and we have a patient who comes into the ER with a green phlegm, Started four days ago, intermittent chills, a fever, more shortness of breath, using her albuterol inhaler, etc. She's got a social history as well as contextual factors of what brought up kind of the bigger picture of patient care. And again, every question is open-ended to identify their noticing and interpreting skills that align with Tanner's framework. So again, what's most important in that scenario, what does it mean? Then we go into the vital signs. And again, it looks like practice with the Dynamap. You have the blood pressure, the heart rate of 110, sets of 86%, fever of 39.6 Celsius, rate of 30. Again, what's most important? What does it mean? Then head to toe assessment, accessory muscle use, um, breath sounds diminished, etc. What's most important? What does it mean? Then we listen to breath sounds, identify what we're listening to. What does it mean? Same thing with heart tones. Then we go to lab values, and I want you to pay attention to some of the metrics here. We've got a white count of 15.4, 91% neutrophils, 5 limps, and 5% bands. And again, what do your students notice is most important? What does it mean? Where is our trend going? We do that with each panel, and you can see there's some key data that needs to be noticed. And this is also kind of a red flag. The lactate is elevated at 2.5. But again, they have to notice. What is it? What are they noticing? What does it mean? as well as ABGs that you can see are concerning for respiratory acidosis. Then we go to the responding skills of what are the possible problems? What's the priority problem? Here's your medical plan of care, rationale, expected outcome for each medication and treatment. Do your students understand what that notice is, what that means? Then your nursing management of care, the priority, priority intervention, et cetera, holistic care, the educational priority, and then the evaluation with the patient's new data two hours later. You're actually 60 minutes later, you have this data. You see the temperature is still high, the heart rate is still too high, etc. And again, making those distinctions of where we're going, as well as our current set of ABGs, and then a narrative note, and then we close with reflection on the student's thinking. You know, how did it make you feel? What did you do well? What would you improve? And what did you learn? And apply that learning to patient care. And so what we're going to do now is look at the actual student's work. And this is where we can then, in the next step, we'll, we'll look at the rubric, the Keith RN Clinical Judgment Rubric, and put this all together. What that looks like, because what I want you to see is that it's just like Tanner's framework. You have four levels of thinking. You've got exemplary, you've got accomplished, you've got developing, and you have beginning. And we want to kind of see, as I've explained in prior videos, I don't want to go too deep into what each of these aspects. What I want you to notice is that we have a percentage of just some approximations that the patient recognized minimal relevant clinical data under the noticing skill, for example. That's a one. We want our first year students to be at least at the developing level consistently. And as you can see, that's some relevant clinical data. They're 50 to 74% approximately. Accomplished is where we want our students at 
the end of the program, they're consistently noticing most of what's important and they're interpreting it correctly most of the time, as well as focused observation. Um, and the exemplary performance is that they see it all. They're seeing the majority. And again, this is kind of aligns with exceptional or expert practice, which our students will not be at the end of the program. And I want you to see that you can kind of look at each aspect of noticing, interpreting, the responding steps, as well as the re reflecting steps. And we can begin to get a sense as far as the thoroughness of the development of the clinical judgment. So looking at that rubric, which again gives you some objectivity, now let's look at how the student did. And so I want you to kind of just look at the thoroughness here and just get a sense of how you would kind of get a sense of this. If you've already, you can access the rubric on the homepage of KeithRN.com uh, and I encourage you to do so if you haven't already. The link is in this video and on the website. So here we have the medications. You can see the expected outcomes, side effects. And overall, you know, kind of, you know, get a sense as far as the thoroughness of what they're noticing and the correctness of, of the information here. When we go to the present problem, they notice the productive cough, the fever of 38.9, difficulty breathing. But look at the thoroughness with the clinical significance. Do they really understand why the patient has the productive cough? It's very short, concise. It's not that deep as far as reflection. They are noticing, but I would say the thoroughness of, 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 of what they're seeing here isn't as strong as it could be. And so now we look at the social history and you can see the, the contextual factors. And now we've got, remember the vital signs. You can see that she noticed the blood pressure being high, the heart rate being high, the fever, the SATs, the red. There's a lot going on. But look at the significance. The student didn't really understand the why and the kind of what's really kind of driving that. She, they noticed it, but they didn't really understand the physiology and the path all of why that data is what it is. Um, you look at breath sounds and actually, um, you know, she's got some wheezing, labor breathing. And again, not really saying that the wheezing is caused by the narrowed bronchial. It's just kind of looking at it from a clinical significance. And so I just want you to kind of pay attention to that as kind of as, 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 as you look at the rubric as I'm doing this to kind of get your sense, because this could be your students and you can evaluate one student, like if they do this as a clinical makeup, or you can do it as an entire class and you can basically get an entire class and you can grade this data and see where their clinical judgment is and then trend that over the course of their program semester by semester. So again, I, as we look at the, the white count, remember the white count was high and again, noticing that the body's not fighting infection the way it should. Um, you've got data related to the metabolic panel, the glucose, the CO2. The lactate is 2.5. This is really important to get inside a student's thinking. Look at her response. It may affect how the body breaks down sugar. Is that an accurate understanding of lactate in the context of infection? pneumonia and possible sepsis and maybe progression to septic shock as you know that's the significance of an elevated lactate it's 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 it's, it's anaerobic metabolism related to impaired perfusion so again we can identify this student has an error in thinking relating to lactate that could definitely impact patient care and nursing priorities let's take a look at how it unfolds and how she does and again, recognizing key data from the ABG did not include the pH, by the way, which was also acidotic at 7.22. And then again, she does have some basic understanding. And then we look at the responding section. Again, what's possible problems um, relating, you know, she's got a sense of the data, but she's not able to put it together to determine like what is the actual medical problem that's this pointing towards. I would want her to recognize pneumonia or some form of infection, respiratory infection, causing respiratory distress, though she did get a sense of this priority problem here, needing more oxygen and what that looks like, but not having a clear path of what the problem is. You can see that with medical management, you can see the responses here and the expected outcome. You can look at the nursing management of care. We need to open up the airways. 
And that is, in essence, you know, recognizing that we have a medical problem of, of hypoxia and a lack of oxygenation. So we've got some priority interventions. Um, and again, you know, basic, basic thinking is present here and what that looks like. You can see that the educational planning and, and information here, I'll let you take a look at that and just recognize that, again, you know, it's, it's like, you know, basic thinking, but yet, you know, there's things that are missing. And so now we go to evaluation of nursing process, the new data of the temperature, the pulse rate, the respiratory rate is still too high. Um, recognizing that, uh, that, that, that some of this information is, is not where it could be. The rate is coming down, et cetera. The ABGs are beginning to improve. We have an assessment finding that you can see that another three column matrix. And then writing a, a nurse's note. Look at the thoroughness of this nurse's note. Just really one sentence for a lot of things that are going on. And we want to improve that complexity and what that looks like. And then we finally close with reflection on their thinking. So again, kind of look at the depth of reflection. As I worked through it, I found my strengths and weaknesses, but not really sharing a lot. And you can kind of get a sense as far as, um, you know, just very not a thoroughness that I would want most of my students to demonstrate. The information is there. You can kind of see it here. But again, not as, as, as deep as we would like it to be with its complexity. And so now what we're going to go to is looking at the scoring worksheet. Now we've got with the group with the scoring worksheet, because we have unfolding reasoning that has got about 40 questions, we got a little bit more information on, on the first for the, uh, in the, in the rubric package that we use the first page. But if you're using skinny reasoning, which is 20 questions, or even the next gen reasoning, which is only eight questions, you can still evaluate their thinking using this worksheet here. And so I want you to know that there's two pages, and that's what I wanted to highlight there. So what I want to do now is look at how did the faculty at this program basically score this student. And I want you to get a sense as far as how you can basically quantitatively begin to score using the Keith RN clinical judgment rubric with your patients, which is a brand new opportunity to give us as educators a window into their world to determine how our students are doing. So when it comes to the noticing skills, you can see this, uh, the faculty here, um, we have four levels. Exemplary is like expert, so most students will not be four. Three is accomplished, which is good. That's where we want them to be at the end of the second year. Developing is, is, is what we'd expect at the end of the first year, and beginning is like coming into the program after the first semester. So we want to move our students to developing practice by the time that they um, are at the end of the first year and accomplished practice as, as, as a mean. And there are a total of seven metrics that we are assessing with skinny reasoning. So our range of scores can be anywhere from seven to 28, depending on how we score them. So using the rubric, we can see that with uh, this faculty looked at their noticing skills and gave them a total of five. They had some important, they, they, they left out some of the thoroughness prioritization, which was the reasoning, uh, some of the things that I highlighted um, in that section, as well as if you look at the interpreting scores, they gave prioritizing data, a developing or a two, making sense of data. And again, remember we noticed that issue, they weren't connecting the dots as accurately as they could, you know, and just ex ex that, that thoroughness was lacking and wasn't clear. So again, only a four where there was up to eight, and that is where she was at in that context. As we look at the other two metrics of the responding, got a total of five, had insight into interventions and responding appropriately was what the faculty commented. And for reflecting, um, Evaluating the plan of care, the patient or the student saw the essence of the problem, that the patient's status was accurate. But again, when you looked at kind of their commitment to improvement and self-analysis, it wasn't that thorough, so gave just a two or developing for a total score of seven for those three metrics in the reflection lacking depth. And what's really powerful about the rubric and the scoring worksheet is that you can provide, in essence, a overall um, provide written feedback to help guide and strengthen students' 
feedback, which is timely and essential to help develop clinical judgment. And so I just want you to see that the rubric will not only give you a quantitative score for your students and to reflect and to trend semester to semester, if you use the Keith R. N. King study, which is the opportunity, especially in the membership platform where you can have all faculty using the resource across the semesters to see where your students are going. But more importantly, you also have the ability to provide feedback um, using a low fidelity unfolding case study. And so I wanted to share that with you. Um, I want to thank you for those of you that recognize the need to change. And this is just another resource that we can use to strengthen the cl clinical judgment so our students are better prepared for real-world clinical practice.